Gabi was four years old, his grandfather, the first Eugenio Lopez, a leading Filipino tycoon of his day, bought the very first TV station in the Philippines. It would be called ABS-CBN. <music> to run it, he tapped the second Eugenio, Henny Lopez, and Gabby's father. Growing up, Gabby showed little interest in the business. He was living the good life. He was rich, handsome, high-spirited, mischievous, sometimes brash, and prone to trouble. A wild horse whose only media ambition was to be a disc jockey at the local radio station. His father, Henny, tamed the firebrand. He yanked off his privileges when his grades slipped, gave him an old Ford Fiera when his friends had sports cars, and even had him sleep in a room under the stairs to teach him that nothing was going to be served up to him in a silver platter. The more his father tried to tame him, the better he learned to let his mind fly and soar. To him, the future will always hold so much more than today. I signed proclamation number 1081, placing the entire Philippines under martial law. Martial law was declared. The dictator threw his father and me in jail, and he had by then turned ABS-CBN into the biggest TV radio network in the country. Marcos stripped all their businesses from them. We were in jail for five years on baseless charges. Gabby himself was in jail too for a brief time, also on false charges, forcing his mom, Chita, to be strong for her two Eugenios behind bars. Even the first Eugenio was captive forced into exile abroad. In one fell swoop, the name Eugenio was cursed. But then there was the great escape. In a daring midnight run, planned by his uncle Steve Sinakis and Henny's best friend, Jake Almeda Lopez, Henny and I crawled out of our prison cells through the cover of darkness to where Gabby and his brother Rafi waited to smuggle us out of the military camp. We were all risking our lives, but we made it. Gabby later said, I don't think I would have given any thought to failing or getting caught or getting shot. It was just something we were going to do. Being rendered powerless by the dictator, he learned to be fearless. He spent almost 10 years in exile. He went to Harvard Business School, got a job in Crocker National Bank, a wife and two children, all the time waiting for the right moment. When the time finally came, Gabby returned to the Philippines in 1986 to be at his father's side in the fight to recover what had been lost. Yet, his father would not let him in easy. He was put under the ringer, castigated in front of other executives, and driven harder than the rest. He even had to take a pay cut. And at one time, when he stayed in a luxury hotel on a business trip, his father had the expense deducted from his salary. This school of hard knocks only made Gabby even more driven. He wanted to grow bigger, faster, beyond his father's television and radio platform. He pushed to become a content company for cinema, cable, publishing, UHF TV, radio television, merchandise, the internet, DTT, 
and he wanted to do all that for Filipinos worldwide. It was in 1994 when Henny finally decided Gabby was fit to become ABS-CBN president and CEO. In 1997, he became ABS-CBN chairman. But soon after, Henny died. The Asian financial crisis hit. Production costs skyrocketed, and a drastic drop in TV ratings sent the company on a tailspin. Amidst the spiraling confusion, his second marriage broke up, and the horror of a stampede threatened to take away all that had been given. We deeply regret the unfortunate incident that occurred this morning in Ultra. Unfortunately, thousands upon thousands of people flocked upon Ultra and created a very tragic accident. And then, the turning point. In the darkest hour, he found his voice. He held himself accountable. 79 of our countrymen passed away. And we acknowledge that we are responsible for whatever happened to those people. And we will do whatever we can to ensure that these victims and their families are well taken care of. I am responsible. At that moment, for many of ABS-CBN, he became the only Eugenio Lopez that mattered. Since then, Gabby has been obsessed not only with expanding, relentlessly with mobile, audaciously with the ABS-CBN sound stages, and breaking new ground yet again with the ABS-CBN theme park. All the while digging deeper into the values of the company and the character of its leaders. Going into the future, we are encouraged by our strong heritage in content that affirm, that inspire. We are confident because we believe that technology only follows where the human spirit wants to go. It is difficult to measure the cultural impact of Gabby's relentless spirit, transcending and converging boundaries and borders in media. But there is no doubt he has transformed the way Filipinos all over the world consume entertainment and information today. His grandfather and his father would be so proud.